Hey, well, hello everyone. Uh, it's Tim and Robin here with Trailside Chats. Uh, it's late December and uh, we thought we'd start talking a little bit about wildlife track sign and interpretation. It's a good time, yeah. The, the, uh, we've had some cold weather and obviously you can see we're standing out on the lake, so we've done some testing of the ice and it gives us a good chance to be able to cover a lot of distance in the open. So we're going to just head down here and see what, uh, see what we can find in, the, in tracks. Great. Yeah. Alrighty, and remember when you are walking out onto lakes, really keep an eye on those shorelines. Uh, you may see wildlife that's using that edge uh, to uh, work as a bit of camouflage or, or a bit of cover for itself. Here we got some tracks right here, Tim, right, uh, already coming up here. Interesting. Uh, we'll have to get a closer look, but boy, it sure looks like they're older tracks. See, there's a bit of, there's a bit of frost line in them, so we can see that they, uh, they were probably from either early this morning or uh, um, from last night. There's a little bit of crystallization. Uh, you can see where it's made its way across the uh, across the lake, moving in this direction just by the path and the way the uh, the foot drag is. But when we look back where it's coming from, interesting, it's come from that beaver dam. So it's a beaver lodge. Let's check that out. So here we have what's known as a bank lodge. Beaver will build them out in the middle of a water body, but they will also build them up and into the bank. Uh, much like the traditional lodge, it may have more than one room in it where they'll dry off and feed and also sometimes have a separate nursing room. The mud walls and stick walls of this could be three to four feet thick. So that, uh, that wolf would have a hard time digging right through. Uh, pretty much impossible, yeah. These are like iron fortresses in the wintertime, specifically the way they're designed. But we can see as the tracks come in, uh, a lot of interest on the very top. We're going we're gonna to walk up there. You're going to be able to see where they've gone right up to the, uh, to the breathe hole. Yeah, trying to get a good, uh, good sense of it. Yeah. He also urinated up here, uh, which is something pretty common. Wolves will use these as uh, major features on the landscape. Uh, in which they used to you know mark territorial boundaries or to remind them to check it out at a later date Robin why don't you tell us a little bit about the safety just approaching a, a beaver lodge like this you always have to be very very careful uh, there's a there's a couple of things and it's basically mostly related to the to the ice the beavers are active year-round perhaps in the winter time we just can't see where they are and what they'll do is they'll have areas um, coming out to the food cache which is over here right out in front of us our approach was off to the to the right hand side coming straight into it because they're active at that uh, at the food cache the ice underneath could actually be um, not as safe as it is or how, you, how you've tested it so always 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 be very very careful now this one because it's a bank lodge you know it gave us a, a, an easy approach along the shoreline whereas other lodges can be out in the middle of a wetland and you really got to be super, super careful about walking out to those. I think just to uh, finish things off as well, we get a lot of questions about how to differentiate between uh, potentially a wild canid track and that of a domestic dog. Uh, this track right here you can see uh, is almost dead straight across the lake, right? That movement across the landscape also the um, direct register of the paws which essentially means that they're putting the rear paws exactly where the front paws went because they've already tested that ground out both for noise if they're stalking but also just for security traveling across the ice and, and i think what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're not going to follow that directly uh you can see in the distance there's a there's a sign there so there is a, an open dam uh, we're going to head back to shore. We're going to see if we can pick those tracks up on the other side where it's, uh, where it's a bit safer. We'll see if there's any uh, further activity there. So just along the lines of uh, essentially the difference again between that domestic dog track and a, and a wild canid track, uh, these are not uh, the clearest by any means, but what we're looking for with the domestic dog is a much broader footprint. As they're developing as puppies, they're often on hard human surfaces that cause that bone morphology to spread out a bit more. Uh, the other thing we're looking for are also blunted nails. The wild canids all have extremely sharp nails, right? So between those two things, when you're up close looking at the track, you can get a pretty good idea. Although that's not to say that some species of dog like huskies or, yeah. or shepherds aren't uh, having a much more similar uh, um, foot morphology as well. 
So Robert, why don't you tell us a little bit about, again, looking across the landscape to tell the difference between those and possibly what they're up to. Well, we'll notice again, uh, they're, they're in that, that distinct straight line where one foot uh, lands uh, right in, or one print lands right into the other one. But one of the things that we've noticed here, as we've come across the lake where there was almost appearing to be a single track, we can see now that it tends to break up a little bit, which tells us that instead of it being one wolf, now we can tell when we look down the trail, there's actually two. They're, so they were following each other's tracks exactly until they got out here and then they started to spread out a little bit, giving us a clue that now there's two wolves uh, that we're t currently on the trail of. Yeah, and depending essentially in, uh, you know, the dominance hierarchy of that pack, some uh, alphas will really be strict about uh, their fellow pack members laying foot tracks exactly where they have, uh, especially in areas where they might be trapped and they have a little bit more experience with humans. So I think what we'll do now is we're going to continue on. We have to get off the lake now because we're pretty close to that dam site. Uh, we're going to head up through the bush and we're going to come out where it looks like they're coming out on that far bank. And we'll take a look and see if there's anything at that site. So you can see here, we've, we've just uh, cut across the lake and we've come up and as we figured, uh, right on this uh, road, uh, we've been lucky enough to find uh, some scat that's been left behind right here. And also there's a little urine spot right beside that. Uh, this is a real interesting uh, opportunity to be able to look at it because the scat can tell us uh, when we look at it uh, pretty much what the animals are eating or the wolves are eating at this time. So we can look in it and find out if there's bits of bone fragments or if there's hair, uh, different types of uh, um, uh, undigestible material is left behind as indicators for what they're feeding on at this time of the year. Yeah, I think that's really interesting too because, you know, again, looking at domestic dog versus wild canid, that presence of a large quantity uh, of hair is a pretty good indicator, as are the bone chips. Robin, when we're looking at the hair uh, in scat like this, what's your guess as to what we're seeing? What, what's the hair from? Well, right now, it could be from a couple of different things. Uh, there, there could be caused from a, a moose, a dead moose carcass. It could be caused from uh, beavers. Now, beavers are one of the prime food sources for, uh, for wolves, especially in Algonquin. Um, but we, I think we need to take a further investigation. Now, one of the things that I think we need to also bring to caution is that this is not something that you want to touch and play around with no. because you can pick up some uh, lung parasites. airborne uh, parasites. Yeah. yeah. So always yeah. keep it in an open area. Uh, never collect and bring back unless you practice the uh, the proper technique to do that. Yeah. And just while we're here on the roadway, uh, it's an interesting example of a wild animal integrating uh, sort of part of the human landscape into probably uh, outlining a, a territory or a pack boundary, right? They often do use these roadways uh, and these, uh, these scat and scent markings are ways of, uh, of reaffirming that boundary. Another interesting thing being late December is that we are coming pretty close to the wolf breeding season. So uh, as the females leave this type of sign, we're looking sometimes also for blood in that urine as a good indication that you do have uh, a female in the area, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. And I think too, one of the things that is interesting to point out, Tim, just when we talk about roadways and where they travel, we can see this one is a, is a bit of a side road leading into the research station, but you'll also find uh, travel on highways, on Highway 60, uh, you know, through Algonquin, and um, it, it, I, you know, one of the things that people do when they see them is, is going back to the breeding is they see them and start calling them. Yeah. And when you start calling uh, an animal at a time of breeding, especially for the wolves, you could actually bring them back out to the highway. And yeah. you know, then they're susceptible to being run over. Uh, so probably it's not a really good idea. To, uh, to practice something like that. No, I think to build on that as well, Rob, and is that if you're calling a lot uh, in a particularly sensitive area, like a, a denning site, you really do want to avoid that because you can push them off a den site. And like Robin was saying, yeah, you can bring them in to areas where there, there is potential for that human wildlife conflict. Well, we hope you enjoyed our, our little segment here on wildlife track sign and ID uh, featuring the wolf. I think with that, uh, we'll sign off and uh, hope you tune in to our next, uh, our next episode. Yeah, that's awesome. And I uh, look forward to seeing you. Thanks, guys.